All right guys, this is a video that's been pretty long overdue and I haven't really been procrastinating on it in the sense that I didn't want to make it, but this is a video that I want to be able to do justice to and be as both transparent and give as much value as I can because this is something that I've been struggling with for a long time. So I've been posting all of my videos this year related to travel. And if you've watched my other videos, you're probably thinking, dude, how the hell do you have that much time off? Don't you have a regular job? Don't you have a regular nine to five? And well, I did, but not anymore because I was laid off back in January. This year, going into this year, I had two trips planned. I was going to Thailand and I was going to Peru, but only to see the Amazon. And then a few days in Cusco afterwards on the way home. Those are my only two vacations of the year. And then the rest of my time was supposed to be just working. Although to be honest, I also did have plans to work remotely and travel the US while I was working remotely, but that was supposed to be centered around working. However, However, between my trips to Thailand and Peru, I was laid off and I was completely blindsided by it. And I'll, I'll never forget it. I was expecting to go into a meeting. It was like my literally my first week back and I was supposed to be going into a meeting to go over my like, project and assignments and whatnot with my boss. And an HR lady also came in with us. And that's when the little like red flag in my head popped up. And I was like, all right, that's kind of weird, but okay. And then that's when, you know, they kind of dropped the news and yeah, it was pretty tough. I, like I said, I was totally blindsided by it. I barely had enough time to kind of gather my belongings, both physically and like digitally, because I had like several like notes and stuff like that. But yeah, I was laid off. I can say that fortunately my boss and all of my team and everyone was super supportive. They weren't exactly happy about it either. And there wasn't like any choice. It was because my company wasn't doing well, isn't doing well apparently, still not a great time. However, within a week of that happening to me, I realized that I could make the best of a bad situation and then extended my traveling. So after my time in the Amazon, I ended up staying in Peru for a total of a month. <laughs> and right after that, I came to Colombia and I've, I did go home last weekend just for the weekend, but I've basically been in Colombia the, almost all of March so far. And this whole time I've been looking for jobs, but the intensity that I look for jobs has ebbed and flowed with uh, how much I've been enjoying my time out abroad. <laughs> And that brings me to the major talking point of my video here, which is the job hunt as a software engineer and how much I hate it. It's just, I hate it so much. At this point in my career as a software engineer, I have over five years experience professionally writing software that is utilized by the company I'm working for internally. This software ranges from internal applications for production, for manufacturing, but the software is for different kinds of products and you've been built using different kinds of tech stacks. So my experience isn't specialized. However, it was specialized enough to provide enough value where I could just keep working at my company until I was laid off at least. But anyway, so you would think that someone that has, you know, professional experience writing software would be able to find a job pretty easily, right? Well, I wish I could agree with that, but I have been struggling. I have no problems getting leads because recruiters see me, see my LinkedIn profile and reach out to me through email or LinkedIn DMs and you know, it's pretty easy to get set up with an interview, but then the interview comes and it just hasn't gone my way. There's only been one company where I think I did well enough during the interview, but they changed their hiring strategy due to the economy right now. So that's why I didn't get an offer, which that's fine. That's no bad reflection on my skills or anything, but I have gone through some interviews where recently that have been kind of a kick in the nuts per se, you know? Like I had an interview today where I, the problem was essentially you have a 2D array and there's a number of rectangles in this 2D array. It's kind of hard for me to describe past that. So maybe I'll throw a quick image right here for you to visualize, but basically the algorithm is supposed to find how many rectangles are in this grid find the width the height and the the starting point of each and this was in C++ I haven't used C++ in a minute but I do know C so you know it depends who I'm talking to whether or not that's relevant but <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
I was able to, you know, get past the initial syntax, but I wasn't able to finish that problem. It just sucks because I I literally have my master's degree and I I made contributions to code bases professionally. And I can tell you that I have not worked with a 2D array in any of my jobs, literally. I've worked with hash tables. I know how to use hash tables. I know how to do object-oriented design in Python at least, more so than C++, but like I know the concepts. With C++, I'm definitely lacking a little bit with the syntax, but like from a design standpoint, I'm very confident in my skills, but I just keep getting screwed in these interviews because, well, I'll take responsibility for the fact that I am very averse to brushing up on all of my data structures. And I know that it is possible to do well in these interviews if you like literally like dedicate six months or something to just grinding on leak code and reading up on, there's like a, I forget the name of the book, but I, I bought this book that's supposed to help with coding interviews. And like, if you go through that, it should take like six months to prepare properly for software engineering interviews. But the way that I feel right now though, is that I shouldn't need to do that because I have five years experience. Maybe, maybe I'm delusional in thinking that, but it just blows my mind that I literally haven't seen any data structures aside from hash tables. And then this one project that I worked on, I had to debug and fix this application for Linux. That was a test that all the test was doing was going and reading the temperature cores, the temperatures of all the cores on, on a PC. And this thing used a linked list to do it. So I had to like figure out how the linked list was working, but that's the only time I've seen a linked list in industry. And what do all of these companies do? They make you go through data structures as like a requirement for the interview, even though you're not necessarily using that on the job. And it's just, it is the most frustrating concept that I just I just hate that industry is like that it's it's literally at the point where like I'm I feel like I'm at this big crossroads where I'm like do I say F software engineering and just do something else do I go all in on my my photography or, or do I still need to is there still another chapter of software engineering left for me to complete and I'm, I'm torn because like on one hand software engineering I, I don't hate the field like I don't hate the job I, I like working I do like writing code at least in the environment of my last company I was very supportive I learned a lot there's great like mentorship and stuff like that like there was room for professional development and I did like writing code like I remember my days of Python development specifically, I was very proud of the projects that I was working on back then, even though I was a test engineer and I no longer want to be a test engineer, the stuff that I was doing on Python was really cool. And I wouldn't mind doing that again. And also on top of that, I can use engineering to eliminate my, the rest of my debt. Granted, the rest of my debt isn't a lot, but it's something that I want to make sure that is completely off my plate before I am staring down the barrel of starting my own business, even though I technically already have started my own business. But then on the other hand, I'm already 26, I'm not getting any younger, and I should just take advantage of the time I have now to do photography. In which case, I did already buy a course, but I'm still a little anxious about it. <laughs> just because the, the course is on travel photography. And I think it's a great way to hold myself accountable since I literally paid a for this course. And in the final weeks of the program is when the uh, teacher is going to start to basically help us to make our money back. So, you know, that's cool. Cause you know, once I have that, then I can continue to ride the wave of that momentum. But yeah. <laughs> It's, that's kind of crazy. Um, if there's anything that you can take away from this, at least, you know, know that your job is never secure. I took my job for granted because I, because of the nature of the industry that it's in, and I'm not gonna disclose that, but just know that the industry that I was in, in the US at least, is a very stable industry. It's very slow moving and much unlike, you know, startup culture where everything is moving very fast paced. The nature of work in my industry, which, you know, if you're in engineering, this kind of probably gives it away. But regardless, the nature of the work moves very slow and it's very secure. And because of that, and the fact that everyone that works in this industry stays there for like decades, I took my position for granted. So 
my saving grace is that I found out from my former coworker who I'm friends with that my position was eliminated purely for financial reasons. I had negotiated a slightly higher raise when I was promoted and for that upper management was looking for a reason to eliminate my position apparently. <laughs> and due to their financial difficulties, they decided to just ax my position. So yeah, but my manager wasn't happy about it and they're still using all the stuff that I've worked on in that role. So that's good for me. That makes me feel good at least, you know. Now this the problem is that my career path was working towards becoming an embedded software engineer and I'm right around two and a half years experience doing what I've been doing now, which was working in C with lower level protocols for the purpose of writing diagnostic software so but it's not like traditional embedded software engineering like I a lot of these embedded software engineering roles require five years experience and you need C++ it literally depends on the company whether or not they value C or C++ some people acknowledge the overlap some of them don't some of them are very strict or it has to be C++ even though like C it's syntactically is identical but like I don't know I don't know, it's ridiculous, but it's it's tough because like I'm I'm professionally I don't have C experience and then I also don't have the whole technically the real time operating system stuff is just not something that I did in my old job. So I don't have that either. So the obvious solution is to start working on some kind of a side project or open source thing to, you know, sharpen my skills while I'm not employed. But the thing is, is that I don't want to do that. <laughs> I really like, I, maybe I'm delusional, but I have, I spent seven years of my life in school studying computer engineering and I, I know how to write code. I know how to come up to speed of the new code base, new technologies. I know how to deliver value in that role. And at the end of the day, I, the, 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 I think personally that the the way that software engineers are like hired and dictating their skill is kind of broken because what you're doing on the job does not reflect what you're doing in the interview process. There have only been a small number of companies that I've interviewed with where they go through your resume and they grill your experience that way. And they like really do like, it's like, like pulling teeth, like but, but from your resume to really get like a grasp on like, all right, what are you doing technically? How, what problems did you solve? Walk me through everything. Like that's the kind of stuff that I excel at is talking to my experience, but I really could care less about knowing how to inverse a binary tree or even something not as bad as a using a 2D array to solve some problem. Like it's not really something that is that bad, but it's something I don't really care for. So this, this video has turned out to be quite the rant. <laughs> We're almost at 20 minutes. I would love to know what you guys think about the state of software engineering right now. Another topic that I haven't touched on is AI. So AI is where software engineering is going. And part of my reason for wanting to go the way of embedded systems is because in my eyes, that field or subfield of software engineering is not going to be touched by AI anytime soon, in my opinion, because that field, while there are probably parts of it that could be like automated or taken over by AI, the hardware piece is something that cannot, at least in my lifetime, be replaced with AI. And on top of that, I have thought that the, those kinds of projects are kind of cool because they're more hands-on, which kind of conflicts with the whole software engineers can work remotely because if you're doing embedded stuff, then chances are you have to be on site to deal with the product. Nonetheless, that's just more so what I'm interested in and I think it better aligns with the whole concept of computer engineering because it's supposed to be like right on the line of hardware and software. But yeah, this is just a little update on, I guess, where I'm at in life, I guess right now. Like I'm definitely in a bit of a crossroads, but also just in general, the struggles of trying to find a job in software engineering. It is extremely competitive and I am not someone who like lives by the code. <laughs> I just want to make like a, a modest living while working on something somewhat interesting. And I mean, that's what software engineering was for me for a while. I was working on some cool stuff and diagnostics. I was building out some cool tests and I was starting to get into like this, this thing called Petalinux, which is an environment for uh, FPGAs. And that was some pretty cool stuff. I was really looking forward to that right around the time I got laid off. But 
regardless it is what it is i've made the best of a bad situation and within this small window of two months i've lived so much it's 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 really crazy and i'm grateful for that i have achieved job offers in the past like i've gotten a job offers i got a job offer last year around july or august for a company that i ended up turning down because i wanted to stay at my last company which in hindsight was a mistake but regardless that happened. I also had a couple of job offers in 2021 that I also turned down. And my takeaways from this whole experience for sure is to not stay with the company for longer than a few years because they will literally lay you off without mercy if the business requires it. And like, it's not a decision that comes like from an emotional place because it was a business need. At least in my case, you know, every situation is different. I'm not really too torn up about it emotionally. Like I, I've accepted it and I, like I said, I made the best of a bad decision or not a bad decision, but a bad situation. But I don't know, man, the software engineering hiring process sucks. And I probably am delusional for thinking that I can somehow get another job without grinding on lead code for months, but yeah, I, I don't want to do that. So at least in this moment in time, I'm trying to hold firm in the belief that my my years of experience counts for something and that the right company will find me or I'll find them. I hope you guys are having a great day. This video actually kind of drained me a little bit. So I'm going to probably hit the hay after applying to a few more places. But yeah, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me rant. I hope you got something out of this. If you are a software engineer and you have an opinion on anything I said, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I would love to hear the discourse. All right, peace.